Hi there, this is Mike Carlson. I'm Director of Operations of Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses. You might have seen me on some other videos on our YouTube channel here. Uh, well, I've got a special treat today. We've actually got some found footage uh, of our 2016 AGM uh, that took place in January of 2016. Uh, we were just coming off a rip-roaring year and starting to uh, explode in growth. We put a huge amount of effort into uh, bringing on a volunteer team. So this was actually the biggest AGM that we had ever had in DFD NFN's history in 2016. And uh, given that it's 2020 now, uh, we've learned a lot from then. Uh, but uh, here you go, and we'll show you some photos and some video and highlights, and I'll do a bit of a, um, a voiceover of all of those. So uh, enjoy our 2016 AGM. So the AGM started in our apartment and uh, Gabriella was there with Andrew. We were mapping out what we can do and we invited so many people like this is Craig and we've got Toby on the right there who helped uh, and Alex Lowheed and we got some smart people to sit down and just organize what we were doing. Then uh, we got together for the weekend for Saturday and Sunday and our team uh, got really inspired and we actually broke out into these massive groups of people. Um, so this was the research and programs group uh, that had a, a huge number of specialists. That was the uh, operations group. We got Ryan Galea there, Mike Cohen. This is the communications group led by Carol. My friend Joey came to support. We got Kieran Jalal there. And this is the student group, and you might recognize Ahmed um, sitting to the right beside Craig. And these breakout groups, like this one with the nurses, was led by Shilby. Um, and we had so many different people supporting. So Funk A came and did um, a privilege walk with our team to try to work on our equity issues. We had uh, other special guests like Connor come, who helps run a scholarship foundation. Um, and so many friends came out um, to support uh, every aspect of the AGM over two days. We even had uh, Sharifa here who worked for the CDC, or Curtis, um, who was a doctor doing a PhD, Gonzalo, um, who uh, was working at CSI, uh, and we took over the entire CSI Regent Park. We're fed a delicious homemade lunch. Uh, we had it catered and invited everybody to join. Uh, and had Nicaraguan food. Then we ended up inviting everybody at the end of the weekend to present their group's work that they had done. And so this was led by Carol. We also had uh, Ellie and Ed uh, here leading an HR. Um, there was our nurses team as well. Um, you can see Kathy on the left there, uh, Jackie, Victoria, Prague. Um, and that's Kathy talking to Victoria. Little did she know that she'd be working out with us for a while. We've got the student club presenting. Again, this is our original student club from U of T Scarborough. Uh, and the first time that Ahmed wore a suit to an AGM. Uh, this was the, uh, the dream team of uh, directors with Bo, our director of research at the time in the middle. Um, and after the whole thing, we went back and we partied um, and we just had such an incredible group of individuals come out. Uh, it was such a powerful weekend and we're so grateful to everyone. Here I give some uh, bonus footage. I'm going to turn it over to Bo, who I think was just so brilliant um, to kind of take us out on one of the presentations that he did on uh, international development. So take it away, Bo. So quick history, international development is pretty new. It's generally just coming from uh, post-World War II with the Marshall Plan just trying to reconstruct Europe post-war. Um, and really this is, uh, has continued in foreign aid and it's really about an effort to create friendly economic markets and to diminish the threat of democracy or communism depending on the country that's to providing the aid. Um, so I think what's important here to realize is that it's rooted in a history of trying to control other countries and make those countries, things that are favorable to the operations of your own country. And this isn't something that is you know, from back in just post-war times. This still happens today. And what we've seen is, um, 
example, with CETA, which is the Canadian uh, International Development Agency. Uh, recently, this got pulled under um, DFAT, which is the Foreign Affairs and International Trade Office, and that is a ministry that's focused on political, um, political relations and trade. So their main objective is how to advance their politics, how to advance um, favorable trade operations. Um, so it's now under uh, DFTD, um, it's the new department. So it's, yeah, it's embedded within an agency whose key focus is on profits. And this, you have to think about that in terms of where funding is coming from when we look at these organiz uh, organizations and governments that are shaping the international development playing field. What funding is available very much fits in with what agendas they're trying to push forward. Um, and it's the social and sort of humanitarian ideals of uh, a lot of international development and why we get into this work um, are often the second priority. And that's something just to keep in mind is like that's the history that we're going up against and it's the history that people in developing countries have experienced and it's what they're used to and it's what they expect from us. So we have something to come up against when we go into countries and this is, it's a historical thing that we have to overcome when we go into these countries. Um, so, and I think there's this continued um, idea within not only governments but within international aid organizations that other countries or communities owe us something for being there. They owe, like we create these contractual obligations where they owe us things for going in to help them. Um, and that's or better or worse, that is sort of the mentality that comes out of a lot of these things. Um, so a very quick sort of overview to bring us up to current times. Um, sort of the modern international development um, agencies were formed in, with Kennedy and Trudeau in North America. Um, so USAID and CETA, uh, that was in the 60s. In the 70s, they're shifting away from this capital and technical assistance. We're moving away from government to government, and we're going to these frameworks of basic human needs. So these are pretty similar to what you're going to see to, uh, you see today. Um, there's a focus on food and nutrition, population planning, health, education, and so on. Uh, sort of the basic foundational pieces that um, people are perceiving as relevant for international development. Um, with the 80s, we get free markets. This is free markets solve everything. As long as we get capitalism into these countries, people will develop it themselves. We just need to create those markets so people can work their way up. Um, and as more people succeed, you'll get trickle down economics where you've got more successful people in this developing country. They, that will then lead to spending. They'll spend more money on other businesses, and the whole country will come up together. Um, and this is also a time when you get a shift away from individual projects to large programs. How can we roll something out across the entire country? We want to take on big, big development things. Um, we're getting private voluntary organizations coming out at this time, and these are the, now becoming the main conduits of development activities. Again, we're moving away from governments doing this, and we're focusing more on other organizations implementing the agendas of uh, these international aid organizations. Um, so one of the big sort of things that comes out of the free markets uh, orientation is structural adjustment programs. This is, we will provide a loan to your country, or we will provide a loan at a very favorable rate, um, so that you can invest in development things, so infrastructure, health programs, and so on. But these all come with attachments, so you have to make certain policy changes, you have to open up your markets to um, free market capitalism. And uh, this is largely done through the IMF and the World Bank, and there's, I mean, it's a little bit against the sort of free market principle of you're going to create a free market, but you're going to create all of these things that are not free within it, that you have to do things a certain way. Um, so there, this also leads to quite a bit of debt later on, that we have a lot of organizations who were lent out a lot of money, who never repaid it, and have a ton of debt that they've been building up, and are still like trying to overcome that through their development. Um, at the same time though, you're also getting a push from other bodies within the UN, um, and it's 
pushing for more of a human development point. So rather than focus on the economic and polit uh, political structures of uh, countries, they want to look at human development as the key lens that we're going to look at international development through. Um, so the idea is that we can't just provide resources to developing countries. Uh, they need to actually know how to use them. Um, so just providing, uh, there are tons of examples, but Canada shipped over tons of tractors to um, various countries in Africa where they didn't work because they're developed to work in cold climates. They don't know what to do in sand. It all breaks down and they don't train people on how to repair them. So that's sort of your classic um, non-human development approach to things. So let's just throw resources in there because that's what they're missing. Um, so with this sort of push for human development, there's we start looking into not only economics and politics and how that affects people, but we're looking into social justice and how can we look at other factors that are affecting people's development and sort of the opportunities available to them. Um, so through this lens, you're also getting a lot of bottom-up approaches. Um, up until this point, it's been very top-down and we're now getting uh, a couple of different approaches, which I'll talk about later on.